I I I I feel like this what we do is is recession proof or whatever proof or whatever proof because at the end of the day, when you can figure out how to spend a dollar and make more than a dollar, that will always be in style. Hey everybody, this is Sita and Garrett. Lash what's up? What's up? From I do I um, invention. What? Good grief! A podcast. From a podcast. For from I no stop. <laughs> from idea to invention, a podcast for inventors and small businesses. Yes, we had to get you some cue cards. Yes, and I, it's also because I can't hear myself again. Or because you turned yourself down. No, because because <laughs> Tommy was <laughs> screaming at me, so I had to turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are here today with Mr. Or do you? Okay, so is it Tommy Powers is your real name? Powers is your real my name. Like they said, right. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm not sure. If, I don't think Traffic is his last name, <laughs> but Powers and Traffic, I think right. those are right about the same level of <laughs> are they, which one is real? real? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> So we are here today with Mr. Tommy Powers and this with the AKA Tommy. Is that the name of your business, Tommy Traffic? Or is that your alter ego or what is that? It's not an alter ego. I am what I am. You get what you see is what you get. That was my buddy of mine gave me that name. He started calling me Tommy Traffic and it kind of it's other stuck. people was like, yo, that's dope. And you know, this, that, and the third, and I couldn't shake it. And it just, <laughs> I just kind of ran with it. Yeah, because he does know how to bring the traffic. <laughs> too. He does know how to bring the traffic. So um we have been a uh, shoot has it been a year now a little over a year i think we met last year in like june at that uh at, at tsp that, so it's exactly yep. a year yep. just it's been a year yeah wow. wow um so i had went to a conference that i had been like hearing from different individuals and um, entrepreneurs in one way or, you know, mm -hmm. one field or another. And um, actually it was my cousin that really made me go ahead and say, bite off that, that cost for that conference. So um, I went and um, ended up talking kind of, it was, for me, it wasn't earth shattering, but the people, I was there more for the people that were there. Right. And in the end, I ended up saying, okay, because I always judge, you know, whether I go again or not as what I got out of it. And actually, Tommy was what I, one of the things I got out of it. <laughs> so I was uh, actually hanging around afterwards, just trying to network and have some conversations. And the conversations that I, were, I was in was like, well, you know, people were asking questions, but they were like, well, I can't answer it, but I know Tommy can. So I'm like, who is Tommy? <laughs> and if I had heard Tommy Powers, I'd have been like, hmm, is this for real? <laughs> but anyway, so I hung around and they were like, you yeah, know, Tommy got the answer. Wait to hear what Tommy says. Tommy will be here soon. Then next, you know, Tommy comes up the escalator. And I'm like, when is Tommy going to stop coming up the escalator? He's so tall. <laughs> but <laughs> when he got there, he started telling, he started giving advice about how to, to, uh, you know, another, um, uh, comrade in the entrepreneurial community or whatever because mm -hmm. she wanted to be able to give her business a certain evaluation um to be sold in the yeah. end and how is she going to go from where she is now to the number that she wants to be valued at and um tommy was the one that was deemed to have that could give her the answer so i'm just like okay i ain't never been in conversations where they talking about money like this so i'm definitely just going to see here and see what <laughs> happens so tommy comes in gives his information mm -hmm. and I'm like, wait, I didn't even think about, you know, the evaluation of our company in terms of an exit, but the, <clears throat> excuse me, the advice he gave her was something I was like, well, dang, we got all of that. Maybe we could do that too. And then it was like, okay, Tommy, I don't know you, but I know I need you <laughs> in this, in this situation of ours in this uh, building of puff cuff. So I, you know, pretty much was like, give me your phone number. <laughs> and you told me, you was like, and I ain't looking for no handout. 
that was that was that was key. Yes, that was true. That was very, very key. Which I still say that. I'm still trying I to agree. get you. To say like. I agree. I agree. So, but um Tommy, tell us more about you. I gave the the uh the you know how we came to be in each other's atmosphere, but tell us more about you. Yeah, I you know, been around for a while. I started doing digital online stuff like in high school. I was computer engineer major. I was dealing with the internet and computers and stuff. And I was always very fascinated by it. Um, and uh, fast forward, I graduated college with a business major. So I ended up changing my major because I flunked out. I was in the NASA Space Grant program and I flunked out because I wasn't doing that. But partying and all of the good, you know, the trappings of being in college. Uh, <laughs> I ended up changing my major to business and um, I went into management. And then um, I had dabbled around even after that with some eBay and different things online, but I always was kind of like, I knew the internet, I knew I was going to do something with it one day. I just didn't know when. Then 2007, I had heart failure and that was really life changing. And so basically it was like, you can't do management. It's too stressful, blah, 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 blah. Uh, long story short, I ended up, it took me about six months to get back on my feet from that. I ended up not having a job um, and my wife was holding it down and I, I couldn't deal with it was, I didn't have a problem with her making more than me. It was just that I wasn't making anything mm -hmm. and I ain't, I ain't like that. So I knew the internet had been a thing. So I decided to kind of just focus on figuring this thing out. And I started spending like the last couple of dollars that we had we probably had four or five grand in the bank. And I was buying, I was, at first I was doing like all kinds of stuff, buying courses and this, that, and the third. And I got into affiliate marketing and that piqued my interest because once somebody broke it down to me, it's like, oh, that's just a, okay, that's just a internet hustle. That's kind of how I saw it. I was like, I can do that because I know hustle. And then, um, so I was doing all of this stuff, trying to get commissions and, and it kept being traffic, 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 traffic. And I'm like, you know, I got to find a way to get consistent traffic. And I was on a, a forum and somebody was like, well, won't you just go sign up for Google ads and get a Google account and you just pay Google and you can, they'll give you all the traffic you can buy. And I was like, okay. And I was like, so I signed up with Google, but then I'm kind of like trying to understand. And then I, I it kind of clicked and was like, okay, if I can get somebody to buy for less than what I make, I get to keep the difference. Mm -hmm. That was the hustle. And I kind of just went with that. And so, I started buying these ads. Mind you, we probably got like five grand in the bank. I ain't got no money coming in. My wife holding it down. And she, she was like, yo, you you out of your mind. Like, I'm I, I'm going to leave you. Like, my wife literally was going to leave me. And, uh, you know, but I just knew that first time I logged into Google, I just knew. It was just something about it. And I told my wife, she could tell you the story better than I probably could tell it myself. But I just told her, like, I don't know what it is, but whatever this is, I'm about to sit on it. I'm about to stay right here and i hadn't made a dime yet but i just knew and it was just something about the numbers and patterns and all of that stuff that really just just sucked me in and i started doing it and i got i can i became really successful technically speaking with the uh, affiliate marketing because um you know i was able to make a sustainable you know revenue I, my best money i probably did 55 grand i probably spent like 25 for 30,000. So I was pocketing in the different zone and, uh, and that took off. And I did that for the first almost two years, about two years, uh, end of 2009, uh, Google shut my account down and wow. I was doing affiliate at the time. Well, so what I was doing is something called direct linking. So what that means is I take my affiliate link, stick it in the Google. And when somebody click on it, they go straight to that uh vendors website so i'm not putting anything in between the person you know like a lot of people will build their list and then they'll push affiliate offers as a result mm -hmm. but i was just direct linking so what happened google came to me and said he go like 12 websites all of them are not compliant with our policy fix them and we'll give you your account back but i don't oh. own the websites so i couldn't fix them and so i couldn't get my account back and that really kind of put me in a spiral because we was making money, but I was living, you know, I had never made, you know, I'll tell you like this, the first year, 2008, 
we did almost 300,000. 2007, I made $5,000, okay? 2008, I made almost $300,000. <laughs> I mean, half of that was ads, but nonetheless, right. I had right. never right. made that kind of money before. Right. My, my best job I had ever had, probably like 60, 70,000 mm -hmm. a year as a manager. I had never made that kind of money before. Like so, <laughs> And I wasn't around no people at that time who were making you. that kind of money. Yeah. So you know what we was, was doing. Like the car, <laughs> the house, the rims. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All of that. Make it rain. The whole, you know, it's just doing that whole thing because you don't know no better, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so when the Google shut me down, we was I was still living check to check, even though we was looking the parts we were check to check, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? We were, it was, that was very much. And so that spiraled out of control, like really fast. Matter of fact, we ended up losing our home. All the cars got repossessed, had to sell all the jewelry, house got foreclosed, all of that. So we really lost everything after that. But in the process of going through that, I was trying to find ways to make money and I couldn't get the affiliate thing back working. I'm trying to do Facebook ads at the time and, that was sort of working, but not really like what I had been doing. And a buddy of mine was like, yo, I got these dudes that want, uh, that want somebody to run their traffic for them. Are you interested? And I'm like, why would I run their traffic? And he was like, cause they pay. And I was like, <laughs> people pay you to do that? He was like, yeah. He was like, you know, you can have your own little agency or whatever. And you can charge people a percentage of what they spend. And I was like, what? Sign me up, bro. <laughs> and that's how I got into the agency game because I, I needed to make money. It was like, you got the skills. You're really good at this. You know what I mean? And I was like, if they paying money, I'm with it. Yeah. So I, I, I did. And that's how I got, you know, 2010-ish, 2010, 2010, late 2010, I got into the agency game. And then 2011, I ended up working for an agency. And then I learned a lot about running an agency. And then fast forward, um, I got to skip a whole lot of stuff because so, I could be all day. But, you know, that's kind of where I am, how I got to where I am now. But can you can you like so far our listeners who are not familiar with running traffic, running traffic and right. kind of go back two steps. Give okay. a, a brief definition of the affiliate piece just so that they can understand what that means. So people who have products and services actually. Anybody that sells something, mm -hmm. a lot of times people are willing to pay a referral fee or a, a referral commission or whatever it is. But it basically, if you bring me a sale, I give you a piece of that. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people use this as a strategy to grow their business. I mean, I think every business should probably have it in their mix. Mm -hmm. um, but in essence, that's what it is. You bring me a sale, mm -hmm. I give you a percentage of this sale. Of sale. For the traffic uh, that however that shakes out right and there's different ways to do that i won't get into but that's the basic mm -hmm. premise okay and then you migrated from that to your the agency piece and so when, when you make the statement of you know your boy was telling you you know you can do an agency help help what does our that folks look like understand what that means that just means i, I help other people manage their advertising dollars so okay. there are businesses they want to advertise digitally and they want to they spend their own money. They can if they want to, or they'll hire an agency who can be typically <laughs> they supposed to be better at managing and making that uh, advertising spend more efficient, which is the value of having an agency do that for you versus you doing yourself. Or even it could be a time thing. Maybe the person in that company is, got so many other things they want to focus on on their business, they'd rather have someone else take that off their plate. And maybe they don't have the capability to hire someone internally to do that for them because okay. some people do this in-house. So they'll hire an outside agency to come in and manage that advertising dollars for them. Okay. And typically the goal is make them, they make more money as a result of what you're doing. You know, they you get paid for that. Yeah. don't always work that way, but that's the basic premise. Okay. All right. Good. So, I mean, I, when, you, when you say how you were able to see the number, almost like the matrix where you start seeing the numbers. <laughs> yeah. So, so oh, what, it, <laughs> right. So, so help, us, help us understand what it is exactly, without giving away your trade six secrets. When someone- Ain't no secrets. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Not really. 
Okay. This rabbit hole ran too deep to get to be worried about. Si- like, it's too. The, the but people hole. don't know what they don't know. <laughs> Correct. So I want to enlighten them as much as possible. Okay. So, hey, I, I'm an open book. So oh, wait, y'all know that. So yeah. explain, so explain how you enlighten. <laughs> <laughs> he looking at you like. I mean, it's just taking people from where they're at to where they want to be. And, you know. But a lot of people don't know where they're at. That's what I'm saying. There's a process. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's the first part. Of you kind of got to get the way you know. You, you know, part of not knowing where you're at is being willing to admit that. So we go back to the story of when you told me, I need your number. I don't know how I need your help, but I need it. <laughs> because you understood that whatever this dude talking about, I don't know. And I know I don't know. But it sounds like something I should know. Or even if I don't know, maybe he knows and sound like I need whatever he's talking about, whether I need to know or whether he can do it or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Because that just means I don't know. And I'm willing to admit to somebody who do know. So just because you don't know is not nothing wrong with that. But can you can you be willing to admit that and allow someone who do know to help you? Yeah. Yep. That's Pretty much what it was. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. <laughs> right. Because the thing that came out of your mouth was, and I'm not looking for a handout. You kind of pointed at me too. It was dead serious. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because so often people do want to pick your brain or, you know, whatever the case may be. And it was very refreshing for me to hear someone say, very rarely do people say that. I don't want a handout. You know what I'm saying? I'm not looking for a handout. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm... Um, I want to give people value for their va- for what they their value, right? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? This is a value exchange. Yeah, it's what I want us to however that might look, right? Because there's a lot of ways to do value exchange. You can barter and value exchange, but ultimately, like somebody's in the mindset of value exchange, very rarely do you get that. Trust me, right. I get people. You know, so that was real key when you said that to me, and I knew I was gonna at least have conversations with you because of that. Well. The um, I knew I was gonna have conversations. I'm still trying to get Tyron and you in a room <laughs> to see. That is, that, that's probably not that hard to be honest with you. But, really? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back on that. Yeah. Okay. Not that hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the thing was the funny what thing was I had to come home and explain to my husband how how. I felt I didn't know exactly what he did, but I just know we needed him. (laughs) And then we was going to we were going I was going to hire him to come in and tell us what we don't know, (laughs) basically. So that's what happened. too, Right. And that's That's exactly what happened. And 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 we the way it broke down, it was like, man, all it, it especially small business. Small business companies like us. It was a lot of can't see the forest for the trees. Yeah, we had numbers all over the place. But I kept on thinking to myself, I don't know what all these numbers have to add up to mean something. And what is the story they're trying? What is the story that they're telling? But I don't know how to get them. I don't know how to decipher them to find out exactly where we're at Mm -hmm. and where we need to go. And we were in the situation where I wanted to not be dependent 100% or even 90% dependent on Sally Beauty anymore. Right. It was like, okay, yes, the Sally Beauty checks are great, but if Sally Beauty walks away, we're in we're going to be in a in, in a pickle. So, how do we and we knew we had the sales and we knew we had a good product even prior to Sally, but it's like there is <clears throat> there is a disconnect somewhere in the mm-hmm. amount of revenue that's coming in and the amount that's going out that we're not able, we're not seeing, um, we're not seeing gain. It's almost like, what are we doing that the money, right. we're getting good money coming in. We're getting good sales. We're getting repeat, cust- not repeat, we're getting new customers, but something, something is, is missing. Yeah. There's a part of the chunk, part of the story we don't know. And um, it's right there, but we need somebody to come in, the, not the data whisper. <laughs> to come in and tell us what that was. So then yeah. we had Tommy come in um, with the whole group. That was a whole day, right? We spent Pretty together. Much, yeah, it was a whole day. We skipped the thing. Okay, the, I'm sorry. What did I skip? Audit. The audit. I couldn't remember if the audit was before or after. It was before. Before. 
Okay. So tell us about yeah. what you charged me with, what you had me do. So basically uh, gave me access to all your stuff. Yeah. Basically, like all your numbers, all of your analytics, Facebook, website, anywhere that you had analytic data online uh, with your business, I, I needed access to all of that stuff. Basically what I'm doing is going in and evaluating what I see. And then I can come back and say, here go all of the stuff that's wrong. Which mm -hmm. then led to, okay, this makes more sense than what I originally thought. And I know that I don't know, and this makes sense. And I get that I can see what you mean now. And I need more help to really fix this stuff, mm -hmm. which then led to the next thing where we end up spending the day to go. Right. I, I, and, and, and I was, because you gave me a huge homework assignment. I couldn't remember if that was before or after the audit. That was probably after the day. That was probably a lot more. Well, because see, I thought probably that was after the audit was over with when we talked about everything, it was like, hey, go this paper with all of this, you know, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah, that was that was probably that was probably a lot. Yeah, it was. But what it and I, I really didn't want to do it. I like really, really because I was like. I was a little afraid of what I was going to find, but at the same time, it was like so good to deep dive into what we actually had um, in our coffers, because all the content that we have, all of the the finding out even just what content works versus what content doesn't work in terms of bringing customers in and all, all of that, doing that deep dive, let me know also, you know, what we have to work, what we have to work with and what, where the gaps are in between. And then with, cause I think that deep dive, um, kind of forced us to see the value mm -hmm. of what we had. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a whole bunch of stuff. We didn't know what the value of it was. Right. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> that got me grinning over here. Because <laughs> I remember being at Jim and Nick's or whatever that place uh -huh. was that we ate at. And I think I looked y'all in y'all face and was like, I threw a number out there. And y'all kind of looked at each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I remember that because I, in that moment, I don't think you understood your value as much as I understood your value. Nope, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Mm -mm. So for you to say that now, you know, put a smile on my face, but I remember saying those things and y'all kind of like looking at each other like, did he just say what I think he said? I think he said that. <laughs> like, oh, snap. You think, <laughs> right. Is, he, is that? Mm, okay. You know what I mean? It was that kind of thing. And that's when I kind of knew, I, even after I left, I told my wife, I was like, they don't even they don't even understand what they have. They don't really understand the real value of what they have. Like they way bigger than they really imagine. And, you know? and, and the, the funny thing is, is that is it's out of out of out of the the time so far. We've only hit. I, I feel that we've only hit the tip of the iceberg. And yep. from what we've seen of the tip. It's like, it's like, whoa. Okay. All right. 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 And the fact that, I mean, I find I, I, this was to, to me, Tommy is a godsend in terms of, because there's so many things now that we would not even imagine being possible or even have, you know, to be like, shoot, there's no reason why we can't have this evaluation. There's no reason why we can't, you know, get to this amount of revenue now that we know that we have <clears throat> what the potential of what we have and then tommy coming in and saying okay based on because i didn't know what aov was uh, uh -huh. customer lifetime value i didn't know i looked at the shopify dashboard and just went <laughs> like well, don't need that. Right, right. How many sales were today? Okay, good. You know, but actually understanding that, you know, the way in order, even though our numbers look good, it's like, okay, if this number is not here, then you're just burning your wheels mm -hmm. because nothing is, you're not ever going to get past the point that you're at. So this number means this. 
And because if, if your uh, average order value is low, yeah, you might have a whole bunch of customers coming to your site, but if they're not spending more than this amount of money, but you're spending this much money on advertising, you're not going anywhere. Right. You're just doing the hamster wheel. You're, you know, running faster and harder, but you're not going anywhere. And it was like, I would have never, I would have never known. And most big, small businesses, especially of our color, they think because you got money coming in and people are constantly buying, then that should be it. But that's not moving you forward. It's just, I mean, it's not moving you up. It's just moving you forward. Right. You don't have any traction. Right. Right. True tracks. Right. Right. There's different tracks because 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 what I'll say is the the easy stuff to me. Right. I mean, obviously, I know this ain't everybody can say, but to me, the easy stuff is the fix or the things that we fixed. The hard stuff is all of the stuff that y'all did to be in the position for me even to come in. Mm-hmm. That's what oh. I get people to understand. Like the value of that is so great to somebody like me. Because, and I talk about this and I tell this to my team and I talk to different people I talk to, are you delivering greatness? That's the first thing that I want to know. And if people that can figure out how to do that, them the people that I want to talk to, because this stuff, I know to you is that, but to me it's like, I just believe it's way more difficult to achieve that than to do this stuff that I'm doing. Because without that, none of this stuff that I'm doing matters. Because you can't build no brand, you're not gonna build, you're not gonna grow, you're not gonna get no true traction if you delivering some, you know, it's some right. BS. You know what I mean? <laughs> you gotta be delivering greatness. That's right. that's the key. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't get that. And you know, I think that's what you guys had. I felt I saw that. You know what I'm saying? So, but then so um, pat yourself on the but, back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think too, what you. It, it, and, and just to kind of like fold this in together, what you were able to help us see, like you said, we didn't know what we had, but that gives us the courage to keep on like to keep on going because it's like it. A lot of times, I mean, we felt like we in this by ourselves. Yeah, there's really no one to, you know, um, like you have we have those people that they put in the media that they're up here with their businesses and they're worth this millions of dollars and that and that and that. But they're just, un, you know, it's like that's unattainable or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're not necessarily, I can have this conversation with them and they'd be like, you know what, you're doing a decent job. So that's what, you know, Tommy did for us to say, you know what, you you really have, you got something good here. Now I just want to help you see exactly what you have. And then from there, this is what you need to do to start to right. implement. Mix it in with the already good cake mix. So, so can we, for those who would be listening and, mm-hmm. and, and are like, okay, I, I heard you guys say, right, you have to be delivering greatness or you, you have to be at a certain point before you can take advantage of a service that Tommy would provide, in essence, right? And is I, that what we're saying? Well, is that what it, we're saying? It, it, I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like, so I, I, I want, I want if time, I mean, if, if it's just like four points, five or whatever, something simple to say, you know what, if, if you're a new business or you're starting out, or even if you're mature and you just can't seem to figure out how to get the right traction in order for them to even entertain your type of agency type of service, what are those basic things that they should start looking at to get should have should have. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Like, like that, that, that homework that they should do before they even come to even entertain your, your time. This this is where I, this is where I struggle. Um, because I'm not really a starter. I'm a scaler. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, but then your story, your story it's going to serve them better on how to do that. Cause y'all just did that. Mm-hmm. But, but, but your, your, your statement in itself. in itself was what they need to un- should understand that your There's service, your service is a scaling service. So Correct. what that means is that they're, they, they have to be at a point, a point to where they're ready to scale. Absolutely. And so 
you got to go through the you, process. Right. So our, but our, our goal is to try to help them. Okay. Understand how to get to that point to where they're ready to scale. Does that make or, sense? No, or even realize. Okay. Go ahead, Tommy. Even realize. No, no. I want you to finish that. I lost it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's a couple things. Um, infrastructure. So y'all can attest to um, having infrastructure. Like when you really start scaling, a lot of things start happening as a result, right? Mm -hmm. Everything from supply chain to employees to customer service to there's just so many variables that when you start scaling, you're going to be tested in a lot of those areas. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the key to scale is you really have to go through the motions and have a sound idea around all of these facets of your business. The thing that I ask people and just to be, to be perfectly honest, if, if you, 10 X your business the last 30 days in the next 30 days. What would that really do? If mm -hmm. you really sat down and th thought about it, like everything that you have to do to fulfill the obligation of 10 times what you generated in the last 30 days in the next 30 days, how would that affect your business? Right. And I can tell you eight or nine times out of 10 people be like, I couldn't handle that. Mm -hmm. Then you're not ready to scale. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't, because that's the reality when you when this when it start happening rapidly and y'all can attest, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. All of a sudden it just boom. It's just like when it hit, sometimes it just mm -hmm. sometimes because it'll be like kind of working. And every now and then it'll just be like Poof, and something happens and you'll be like, whoa. You know, and most businesses or you know, a lot of businesses who aren't who don't have the proper infrastructure to handle that, I've seen that derail companies. Right. I've seen that companies crash and burn as a result mm -hmm. you know so uh it could it could be i'm uh, making products too fast so my product quality went in the tank it could be you know i'm running my employees ragged and they quit on me uh, it's so many different things right that i don't think people really understand when they say they want to scale i, I think what a lot of times really people mean? don't really understand what that means mm -hmm. yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so so usually when you get a certain amount of sales I, I'm 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 probably like a half a million to a million dollars a year in revenue range. You probably have it figured out by now. If you get the seven figures, and some people think scaling is seven figures, and that's that's great. I don't think that scale. To mm -hmm. me, scale is fifty million, hundred million, mm -hmm. two hundred million. You know, mm -hmm. so there's a difference between scale, my language, and somebody else's too, right? right. So you probably needed to make make that clear. But when I talk about scale, I'm talking about multiple eight figures, nine figures. Mm -hmm. Usually you get to a million dollars. You, you probably got it. There's, there's probably something good there something or somewhere in that range mm -hmm. to be able to sustain that type of revenue over, over a period of time. You probably got a pretty good understanding of your business. And then you might just got to tighten up some things and you might have to go through some stuff with that too, because mm -hmm. you'll hit certain plateaus and fizzle and hit them and, but your business, because of that and having done a certain amount of revenue for a while, you won't, your business won't implode, if you will, versus, you know, I've seen that happen to people who are trying to run too fast. So, so, um, so it's those things that I know that's probably not a direct answer, but it's almost just like you got to get in the game. You got to figure out how to get some sales yeah. and you got to figure out how to sell on a regular and consistent basis. And huh? that's just, how, kind of the, how, how would you how would you say the percentage, um, the ratio of infrastructure versus mindset? Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> I think it varies, man. I mean, honestly, um, I find very frequently that mindset is a bigger issue than infrastructure depending on but again this is this is like i'm looking at a business maybe they did 300k maybe they did 500k maybe they did 700k maybe they did a million dollars and they've been around three or four years you know what i mean like mm -hmm. typically infrastructure with that is not it's usually like 
I started my business six months ago and I'm already doing hundred thousand dollars a month and they hanging on by a shoestring, even though they're making a lot of revenue, they haven't had enough time to really work through all of the issues that they're going to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But usually like the longer the business has been around and more consistently, you know, generating revenue, infrastructure is an easier thing because mm -hmm. usually what happens to stay that long, you've had to figure some things out. Mm -hmm. Like when we talk and I'm like, talking to you about supply chain and I'm talking to you about fulfillment and y'all talking about we had these people and they was this and that and the third and we was like, we could do that. And so y'all went and figured that out. Right. Right. So that's a result of being in the game, you know, and then realizing certain things. And then it's like, we need to fix this. We can keep dealing with these people or we can solve it ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. That's part of that kind of being around on a regular basis. You kind of have to figure these things out to kind of keep it going. So usually the infrastructure part is an easier fix in that, but the mindset, the mindset piece, I think that I think the the, the ratio is I don't even know, but usually mindset is usually you know in you know different situations, but usually mindset is a is a big one mm -hmm. um, because it's just kind of like sometimes just believing that it's possible, you know, and not because somebody tell you that that's where they can be you believing you can do that is two different things. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to tell you from testimony and experience that <laughs> uh, <laughs> mindset, I, I, I believe at minimum, I, I believe mindset is at least 60, 60 between 60 to 70% of. I think it's more than that. It. Well, be, because I mean, just just from our interaction in the, in the last twelve months of how you've pushed my mindset to where now it's what what I thought twelve months ago was unattainable. I'm like, yeah, whatever. We're about to get to that, mm -hmm. and then some. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, so the and because and cause, cause the, infra the infrastructure side for me is okay. That's okay. I'm, we got we got that. But but five years ago, would you have said that? Oh, no, no. no. See, that's the no point. Yeah. No. But the other part of that, too, is not only can we say we can get there, we got the data to prove that we can get yes. there. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting, we got T-shirts in the office that says, where's the data? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's good. <laughs> but um, so... Yeah. Three X. That's my side. Three X. Three X. <laughs> <laughs> so we ain't took a break yet. How are no, we just running we're, through? We were going straight through. Oh, we're just going straight through. Okay. Yeah. So tell us how um, you were saying how COVID has totally changed the business, your your business. So explain how that has happened, and in hindsight, why you think it's happened. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. How it happened, I think, is just the nature of the industry that I'm in um, in terms of what my skill set, you know, my company does, which is digital advertising and the nature of the types of people we work with being that they're e-commerce, whether it's physical products or digital. And what happened as a result of COVID, a lot of people turned to the Internet to get essentials and certain things and then online education side of e-commerce on a, on a digital front just kind of overnight kind of became this, you know, then you had, then you had a lot of businesses who were falling by the wayside as a result of COVID, which then mean less advertisers. Then we had the protests with everything going on with George Floyd and a lot of these big brands are pulling out of Facebook and, and this type of stuff. So what ended up happening as a result of this whole culmination, the, 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 the inventory to advertise on these social platforms was, was a little bit more open. Prices were down mm -hmm. and it kind of just made sense for opportunities that I'm already right? working with. The ads just started going crazy and it's just like spend more money and it just kind of become I don't know. It just kind of just, you know, just kind of started going crazy, and it just kind of literally happened. Like, I want to say, 
January, February is when I kind of start feeling good about what we were doing, you know, on the agency side, getting a lot of traction. But it really was like March, April, where it kind of just like the light switch flipped and it mm -hmm. was like, oh, snap, you know, and then it just kind of and we still in the midst of it. It's just been it's just been phenomenal. It's just been phenomenal. So um, so so I think I answered the question right. Mm -hmm. uh, both both. But where do you see it going? Like, what what do you feel out there? Um, I think there's a lot of uncertainty um, with the COVID situation, with um, the movement uh, for our people, which is very important to me and my family, obviously, uh, that I got children and they're going to have kids and so forth and so on. The world that we live in now is definitely not a world that I thought we'd still be living in when my in 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got a lot of work to do there. But I just think there's a lot of uncertainty um on the horizon. But for me, uh personally and my company, um I I I feel like this what we do is is recession proof or whatever proof or whatever proof, because at the end of the day, when you can figure out how to spend a dollar and make more than a dollar, that will always be in style. <laughs> you know, and that's in essence what we're trying to do, right? At the mm -hmm. end of the day, is um, we want to acquire customers and then we want to create more value for those people. And that's really what a sustainable business is. I mean, you know, our, every business has to, if you sell one thing to somebody and you got to go find another person to sell to, and you can't sell nothing to those people that already bought from you again, you really ain't got, that ain't really no sustainable business. You mm -hmm. gotta get customers and figure out how to get them to buy more from you again. And that's really kind of the game plan. So, you know, we understand that. And, you know, the goal is to be able to spend a dollar and make more than a dollar. And it's not always about getting it all back at the same time, right? We, we talked about this stuff, but, but it's, it's understanding the value of a customer, you know, and then being able to go and spend money and use advertising get customers and then be able to create more value for them where they want happily want to do more business with you. And I think that'll always be in style. I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's just a basis of business one-on-one -on -one that we figured out how to do with digital advertising and digital landscape, uh, if you will, to do that in digital, you know, arena. So I, I just don't know how to, it's just so much uncertainty to kind of really know, but like, I, I'm pretty confident that what we do will always be in style mm -hmm. to what degree I think is going to depend on the climate that we're in, but I think we're going to be fine. So what would you, what advice would you give a startup or new business or, or, What's, what's the one thing that, that you would want them to walk away with? Um, in the climate that we're in, in the right now. the climate that they're in and, and even beyond the climate, right? Because I mean, well, we're, we're going to come through it, but the world's going to be different. The world's going to be different. we're going to come through it. So. Do you think, because I kind of think since COVID, it has not leveled the playing field, but opened up a lot more opportunities for brown people than it was before. Are you saying uh, yeah, that's what I want to know? So if you and I have some, you know, brown businesses that are like push, giving pushback about I don't want to take out a loan for this and I don't want to do that. And I'm like, my whole philosophy is first time this is one of the first time we've gotten more money since COVID than we've gotten in the seven years that we've been in business. Wow. Yep. That's, and that's true. it's like. Wow. The, the field has been somewhat leveled, even if you don't need the money right now. Because at first, when they were giving out those PPPs, we didn't need it. But now we're out of inventory and we still got 10 employees. So we need it. So yeah. you just don't, I mean, just what would you say? I think um, this is this is probably where my boy Tyrone would be, would be, would be the rock star. Because he, he has a very good way of explaining, but you know, he has a three-step system that he kind of goes through. But, like, you know, in essence, it's, it's really just about, you know, finding a problem. <clears throat> Obviously, if you have something you want to do, you have to know that there's a need for what you want to sell if you're not already selling that. And if you already are selling something um, and you're struggling to sell that, 
then you have to really go and research the need. And so one of the things Tyrone will talk about as part of that process is go out and look for other companies doing what it is that you're doing or, mm -hmm. you know, what are the, who are the competitors in the market that are doing what you're doing or attempting to do? Because if they are already making it work, then you can make it work. Right. And then if it's not out there, <clears throat> you know, not to discourage anyone, because sometimes you are going to do something that no one else is doing, but is it still solving a problem? Right. Cause puff cuff wasn't out there. You solving the same problem just in a different way. Mm -hmm. So that's a really great example of, well, I know what problem I'm solving. I just have a different way of doing it versus I'm going to create this thing that, you know, no one's ever seen before. <laughs> and it's like, but do people really need that? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's really the key thing at the end of the day. But if you got that part down where you know that there's a real problem and you have a real solution, the next order of business is go figure out who are already doing that and see what you can model off of what they're doing to get yourself moving forward on that. And that's really what it, what it boiled down to because that feedback, as you guys know, it's nothing like feedback until you getting, you know, putting product in people's hands mm -hmm. and people putting money in your hands. And that exchange is what's going to make you better. The more you do those, the yeah. more you're going to start figuring, you know, things out. And at the end of the day, you don't have to know everything out of the gate. You don't got to, I think sometimes people just overthink it. It's just like, I, w I got something that people need. I need to find those people who need it. And I need to figure out how to get them to give me their money in exchange for this thing because what I got for them is better than the money that they got in their hands and go and do that, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a million ways to do that. But in essence, like that's basically what you did. Right. I remember y'all telling me some of the stories, right. Mm -hmm. of, of vending and all of these other ways that you've been able to find, you know, people who had a need that you could solve. And I think that's really the, the core of it. And um, like I said, if you can find other people that are doing what you're trying to do or solving the same problem, maybe yours a different way, but you know, see what they're doing and study their online behavior. And you can go to their Facebook page and click on page transparency and then click on their ad library. Mm -hmm. And then you can go see all of their ads and you can click on them. You can go to their website and you can go to their landing pages and you can buy their products and go to their funnel. And I mean, we do all of that kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? As mm -hmm. market research, or even if it's somebody that sells something over the phone, whoa, Go through the process. You know what I mean? Go through and see what other people are doing and see what you can borrow from. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? This, that's just, wow. you know, I know that we're inventors that we're talking to and it's like, don't reinvent <laughs> the wheel. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, take advantage of the tools that's available to you because everybody now, you know, and I will say this, I think now more than ever before because I feel it from a lot of different arenas. People understand the value of advertising and you know their business online more so and it's crazy to say this but it's so crazy like people are so understanding of how they really got to get their digital you know game going for their business in order now, to survive so right now right ever before mm -hmm. but what's also goes with that is because of digital you can you, you know you can kind of go and study what other people are doing you mm -hmm. know we call them swipe files we'll go study our competitors and we'll screenshot stuff. We'll record ourselves buying stuff because we're trying to understand what's making this business work and what can I borrow from that to put into my business. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. really what I would, I would recommend. Uh, once you got something and you know that you solving that problem, uh, mm -hmm. then if you want to go to the next level with it, digital is going to be probably a priority in the foreseeable future. Uh, so. Wow. That's, that's good stuff right there. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Well, you want to take us out? No, you no. take us out. That I was good stuff. Well, Tommy, how do people find you if you want to be found? <laughs> I'm easy. I'm big. I'm six four and a half. <laughs> oh, I, I got gray hair on my face. <laughs> I talk loud. I'm country as hell, and I mean, ain't that hard to find? But Tommy Traffic, my name with an IE. So it's not Tommy with a Y, it's an IE. Tommy Traffic, I'm Tommy Traffic. That's my website.com. That's uh, Twitter, Facebook, all of the different social medias, all that kind of stuff. Even though I'm not a big social media user, 
typically if someone want to contact me or reach me, my website is the best way. You know, go to my website and, and hit hit us up there and and uh I you know check that pretty regular. Mm -hmm. And I definitely always respond to people regardless of whatever. I just pride that in myself and my team understands like even if somebody, you know, hit us up that's not we can't really help. We're still going to respond. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And I well, say, if you hit them up, be ready to work. Yeah, be re yeah, be ready to work. Hey, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. I don't sugarcoat. That's just not my style. You know, I just tell it like it is. I, I, you know, I'm transparent. I wear it on my sleeve. I'm passionate about what it is that I do. You know, and some people can't stomach that. You know, some people can't. You know, they want they want uh, too much cream in their coffee. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm probably like you know straight black. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't got time for the, you know what I mean? That's just, I'm not, that's just not right. who I am. And, you know, I just try to, just try to keep, you know, try to keep, keep, keep it a hundred. Like we say, keep it a hundred. Like, yep. I think the world need more of that, to be Ain't honest. I think Lord have mercy, people yes. that screaming the loudest is probably the ones you need to be, you know, you need to be watching. Right. You know, um, I'm not on no mountaintop screaming, da 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 da, -da right. whatever the case may be. I'm about doing the work. That's why you just said you better be ready to work because I'm about doing the work. If you ain't ready to do no work, I ain't really the dudes you want to be talking to. <laughs> and that's really what it boiled down to. But you can't get data. So I'm a data guy. So you can't get data without work. You can't yep. Get, yep. don't have no data. Yep. Right. And if I don't have no data, I'm no good. You know, and that's really more than anything. Like traffic is just a mechanism to get the number, the data, so that I can figure out what's happening. Because I have a, an ability to see the numbers in ways that other people don't. Sometimes stuff just jump out the screen at me and i don't i can't explain that that's just i guess that's my superpower right that's your, and i yes. can see things and pluck out and be like no all right now i need to fix this 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 and this and then let me try that again and then we just iterate through that process and you just incremental improvement but what happens is compounding interest mm -hmm. if you know the rule of 72 and in investing it's the same thing over here right mm -hmm. but we can do we can accelerate that so much faster right we can accelerate it so much faster. So it's just incremental improvement. Then all of a sudden you'll get it to pop, you mm -hmm. know, and it'll just, you know, but that's, but, but it takes work and that's a process. And I think some people are sold on drinking the Kool-Aid, you know, because people talk about this, that, and the third, and they're making big claims and stuff like that. And at the end of the day, all of that stuff is possible if you're willing to put the work in. But a lot of people are just like, oh, you could get this outcome, but you ain't got to do that, you know, and it's like, that's, not true. Not at all. I work like that. But right. you know, hey, if that's what you believe, I ain't your guy. <laughs> well, you my guy. So yep. thank you so much. Thank you, Tommy. We mm. totally appreciate you. And um, um, I mean, it's time for you to take us out. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as Cita said, you, you are a guy, and, and, and you are appreciated. So thank you for everything that you've done and what you brought to the table and what you will continue to bring to the table. So we thank you, man. Man, I appreciate y'all for sure. All right. Thank Go both ways. Yeah, I appreciate it. So as we always say in parting, take care. Be blessed. And be a blessing. All right. See ya.